Welcome to the sixth episode in a series where I'm doing a total rebuild of my cheap CNC 3018. Before we get into it, a big thanks to all those who left those nice comments in that last video. Very much appreciated. The statistics even improved a bit, going from about 50 real viewers up to around about 70 in that last video. So that's a bit of a boost, I guess. In this video, I'll be doing the primary assembly of the CNC, putting together all those bits and pieces you saw in that last couple of videos. First up is a time lapse showing the entire assembly sequence, after which I will touch on a few important points which I thought worth noting, so I don't switch off straight after the time lapse, there's a bit more after that. And finally, right at the end, I will show you the whole thing assembled, so if you want to skip to that, that's fine too. You do you. Anyway, let's get into it.
So overall, the assembly went pretty smoothly, actually. I did struggle with the position of the XZ gantry at first because I couldn't really push it far enough back to get the full 220mm stroke. And that's mainly because I didn't plan it out properly. I just assumed it was going to be okay, and obviously it wasn't. And thankfully, I found out if I removed the corner bracket bolt at the back, by a miracle, it would just move far enough back, so I got super lucky there. So at first, I just removed those rearmost bolts. Then later, I tried grinding down the head of the bolts to try and get them to fit, which was a bit of a fail. So in the end, I actually just ended up countersinking all those bolts, and that pretty much solved the problem. And another stupid little mistake I made was not drilling out the front panel lead screw hole enough to provide clearance. Easy enough to fix, but I nearly missed it. And the biggest worry I had was that there was, at first, a lot of play in that Z-axis assembly. It was really wiggling around a lot. So when I disassembled the assembly, I did notice everything was stuck together with a green Loctite. But as I was assembling and disassembling it a number of times, I thought the fit of the bearings and the rods would be tight enough. So at some point I decided not to go and bother putting the green Loctite on, uh, which was a big mistake. Thankfully, after reassembling the Z-axis assembly with copious amounts of green Loctite, all of the notable play went away, and I can tell you that was a huge relief. Also 3D printed a bunch of add-on parts in the TPU, like these feet, which lift everything up for around about one centimeter. So to screw them on here, I simply tapped M3 holes into the frame itself and screwed them into place. Also 3D printed some covers for the corner brackets made from that leftover 2040. Those cutoff edges are really crazy sharp, even though I'd filed them down a lot. So hopefully that's going to stop me from cutting up my hands while handling the CNC. So let's take a quick look at this thing uh, overall. Here you can see those uh, 3D printed covers that I've stuck on there and uh, here. And a bit of 3D printed strip here which I've stuck on the frame. And you can see the knob here. Yeah, it's still looking pretty. It seems like the heat treatment is still sticking on there pretty good. And on the inside you can also see the bearing housing. And I reckon that looks pretty, pretty nice. And also, I didn't show in the in the time lapse, but uh, the knob for the x-axis and the lead screw, and the z-axis assembly, and the stepper motor offset all oh, looks really good. Yeah, I think it came together pretty good. So let's see if I can lift it up, and we'll have a look around the back here. It's getting pretty heavy. Yep, no surprises here. The uh, Y axis stepper motor and the end stop sensors tucked underneath the gantry here. And I decided to reuse the 3D printed parts from my original CNC. So I think they're going to work fine too. And I think probably the last thing that's probably important to point out was that during the assembly, you saw me using the spring type uh, lead screw couplers, and you actually saw me sort of shifting them around a bit there, and I was a little bit worried about that. Anyway, for now, I've just switched back to using the original solid blue couplers that came with the original cheap CNC 3018. I reckon they're probably going to perform a bit better than having all that loosey-goosey springiness in the system. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. In the next episode, I'll be showing how I made a fully DIY built controller for this CNC. Sadly, it's not going to be a DIY PCB, but I think it's going to be pretty cool regardless. Definitely hope to catch you for that one. So I'll see you then.